I'm, a, I'm Dan Radigan, Type Director of Monotype here in the UK. And I'm uh, James Lee Duffy, um, Quote Director at We Are Shadows. We're at Monotype's London studio where our type designers work out of. James said he was interested in a few different typefaces. He sent us a list. Um, and we have material in the archive at Monotype down in Salfords for a few of the typefaces. But interestingly, they weren't all typefaces that we originally developed. Uh, so one of them was Futura, which was done originally by a German foundry called Bauer. Oh, and we happen to have a great pack of original specimens amazing. and samples of this. Futura. I should be wearing white gloves. No, absolutely not. White gloves are bad for archival paper oh, really? materials. Yeah. I never knew that. Yeah. Yeah. So Monotype would have had these because they were looking around at what competitors were doing in the day to try to figure out if they should try to do something comparable to, for their own machines. Cause uh, this would have been made for foundry type. They wouldn't have worked on a machine system like monotypes. Um, so you can see in the monotype and monotype archives that um, they were very interested in how successful Futura was becoming. Uh, my attraction, one of my attractions in Futura was that I'm a massive, I like my street art and my street wear. Yeah. And obviously the Supreme logo uh -huh. is Futura <laughs> Bold Oblique, yeah. designed by Futura. <laughs> back in 1994, and that's kind of one of the attractions, and I wanted to know a little bit more about it. And of yeah. course, I use it a lot in, in my uh, my creative work, but it's just amazing the but type of today and of tomorrow. Tomorrow broken. It's such a good beautiful. slogan, but also it totally turned out to be true. Oh, it's just beautiful, beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. So, what sort of time did this really sort of come into fruition? This come about? Um, so, Futura was. Uh, late 20s, early 30s is when it really exploded. Right. So a real exciting time, really. Really yeah. kind of, you know, the Art Deco. But they haven't gone for the classic Art Deco Art Nouveau style, have they? They've really gone for that sort of forward, forward thinking. But forward you can, style. I mean, you can see some Deco things in some mm. of these ads they're responding to. Um, I love this inline Beautiful. version. I've never seen I've this never floating seen. around. And it's so it's fantastic. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Really, really lovely. So when was the last time this slot saw the light of day? I mean, it must have been a while if it's been in your archive. It's um, yeah, well, and, until we were looking through it the other day, probably it had been sitting on the shelf for a few decades at least. <sighs> wow. It's like like, Raiders of the Lost Ark, isn't it? Yeah. It's incredible. That's what's fun about having people come in to look at this stuff is, you know, to, for, to have some appreciation after sitting quietly for so long. Yeah. I mean, so what do, do you use Futura in projects? Very much so, today? yeah. Um, I try and use it, especially with something loud and uh, solid and kind of strong statements. Yeah. Not so much as body copy, but very much so for kind of strong headlines. Yeah. Um, especially when I can't, like, and especially on my, um, when putting together presentation and documents, I kind of want to get a really strong communication across yeah. and strong punch or type, very much. Uh, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> that would go in the pocket. <laughs> it's absolutely you know, frisky on your way. Yeah, Make sure everything's accounted for. That's absolutely stunning. Again, it's a great punch of color, isn't it? The color's amazing, though. How it really complements. I mean, that's what I love about Futura. That it really holds solid color and really yes. holds bold, bright color as well. It really is a strong face. It really takes some guts to it. So, when, when you use Futura, does it feel like it has a personality of a certain era? Very much so. Yeah. yeah, very much so. And I feel, rather than, you know, obviously it comes from 1929, firstly I feel that it's very much a kind of a modern typeface and it's forever moving forward. It's never sort of stuck in its own own time because look at some a lot of typefaces, they're yeah. very much set to a certain period and feel about yeah. period. And what I love about this is that it's always moving forward. It's, it's, it's uh, extremely, extremely powerful yeah, it's, type. It's the type of today and tomorrow. Very much so, very much so. Hence. <laughs> I love it. It's so true. It's just... It's always, um, we find this in a lot of old type specimens in our archive and what you find in bookstores, but you see all this evidence of people slicing things mm. out for different projects they were putting together over the years. Right. You know, before, before it was easy to just set a font because you would have it mm -hmm. as an electronic asset. If you wanted to do a quick mock-up, yeah, you would slice a bit out of a specimen uh, and then and throw then it down in a layout. That would probably be photographed, is that right? Yeah. And then it'd be, obviously, made, plates were made from yeah, that. Probably by people just like you working in a repro. That's house. it, many, many years ago. Beautiful. I actually think it's really great for designers to see these original specimens because 
I think they really say a lot about what the typeface has the potential to be very in a way so. that you don't get from just very, looking at it in a very, very much so. Yeah, I, I very much agree with you. It's so easy just to sort of skip through it, isn't it? When you're sitting kind of in the zone of sitting at a computer. And there's, a, there's a personality to the metal type that I think is, is harder to capture working digitally. But there's, some, there's something about Futura that lends itself to those sort of strong, pristine mm. statements, um, like um, Wes Anderson using Futura medium for the title cards in the movies. Yes, and, yes, and very and much Barbara so. Kruger. There's sort of, it can be sort of elegant and strong. Yeah, it really can. Way. And it's, it's just timeless, that's what I love about it. It's just, it's just a strong, clean typeface. So I'm getting a little bit involved with these. It's great, aren't they? Obviously German fridge brochures. Yes. Amazing. Absolutely superb. Obviously, yeah, well, Dan, I just want to say thank you to obviously your fine self, to Monotype, Dino D, to being so, uh, being asked to do this, because it's an amazing privilege to have kind of, get access to the archive of Monotype. It's just real. Real privilege, really. Especially for me, coming from Rygate Art School, down the road from Monotype head office. It's, it's, it's quite, a, quite, a, quite an achieve, uh, amazing thing to kind of be asked to do. So I really thank you. That yeah, was a real pleasure. Thank you for coming. Probably enjoyed it. Okay.